Hey, welcome back to the Movie Club with Friends. We're back for another week. Uh, this week we watched three billboards out of Missouri? Outside of Missouri. Outside. <laughs> yeah, it's a long, <laughs> it's a long, long indie title. I'm, I'm you glad you prepared. <laughs> Very prepared. Uh, what year did this movie come out? Last year. Yeah, 2017. So a 2017 or Tanner. Uh, so it was a Tanner pick. <laughs> So we'll yes. have Tanner talk first and explain uh, why he picked and how he liked. Um, why did I pick it? Uh, it was more just like coming down to two movies and listening to how many people hadn't seen one or the either. Um, this was a movie I had seen previously and really, really liked it. And I thought it had some really cool twists and turns in it. Uh, definitely not that I expected. I like I kind of like movies that do that. I I have a tendency to like try to predict movies or like what happens or what is going this to movie, happen yeah or what is going to happen or anything like that i try to like read into movies a lot more like that than probably i need to but uh this movie was really fun because it didn't really play out as expected and it set up really these these portrayals of people at the beginning that you thought were correct and then just flipped them on its head um Oh, what's his name? Dixon, I think? Yeah. Who, we don't see what happened, but apparently he beat a man in jail. Uh, then he beat the newspaper's owner, or owner kid? I don't, I can't remember his name. Red? Red, yeah. yeah. Uh, he beat the shit out of him. Mm -hmm. um, I can't believe he didn't go to jail for that. Like, I, have I don't no understand idea how. how. Jail, besides the point that it's basically showing that they're the cops in a small town. What they say goes, basically. There's no other jury, judge, whatever. It's them. So no one else can do anything. Um, which I don't know how true that is. I think they kind of even but... show it later. Like, you know, like, not to mention... I guess it's not really a spoiler, but I mean, it's just talking about the end of the movie. I mean, we, they... spoil, we spoil... We spoil every so, movie we, we review. Spoil so I know. Yeah. yeah, everything. Don't watch this. Sh don't listen to the show. Let's see. Watch the movie. Watch the movie before you listen to the show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, even with the other guy that they go to Idaho to go get, they're like, oh, well, his commanding officer. I feel like a little theme in the movie is that, like... Officers can somewhat do no wrong too. So, or they yeah, they have. More. I think part of it's you. I think part of it's culturally, not culturally. Uh, I guess kind of culture right now is like you know how everyone's saying like, oh, these cops will do something bad, but nothing ever comes of it. Uh, they'll get put on paid leave, and then they'll eventually they'll be allowed to come back. You know that kind of thing. So I think that's kind of like how it's picking at it, but more in a older sense. Because I don't think this movie is recent-ish. Like, I, I could see it being, like, kind of recent, but not super recent, if that the makes setting. sense. Yeah, the setting. The setting of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it must at least be <clears throat> early... The 90s? I would say 90s. I think but that's they, they my have, opinion where it'd be at. They have smartphones, so... I was thinking, like, 2005, maybe. I yeah, actually, well, maybe, maybe I didn't pick up on it, but they did have smartphones. I didn't, I didn't know they had smartphones either. Actually, I didn't see smartphones. Uh, one of them has a flip phone, but at some point, the the, the oh, chief flip phone was '90s. The chief, uh, he has a smartphone. I'm ninety percent sure. Okay, I, I didn't see it. Did they have smartphones? Maybe it really just matters. Like, I, yeah, I mean, it's a phone. We know that's what we see as I a phone see. now. So maybe that's just imagery for what we see as a phone. I don't know. That's that's uh, one thing I was going to talk about. Is it kind of it could take place in the South anywhere from, really, from, like, <laughs> what, like, the 70s? Nah, no, it wasn't the 70s. To, to, this was, like, to, this to was like 90s, the 2000s. But it, it is kind of timeless in a way that it, it could, yeah. this story could take yeah. place whenever. He's talking about, yeah, he's talking about that culture could have been from the 70s till the end. Yeah. Yeah. In that small town. Even if you look at the cars, like the cars are kind of older, but I don't think it's because it's set. Like, I think it's just because there's not as much money I think, in the town. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like exactly. that's why I'm like, it doesn't matter. Like it's. Just, um, I, I I took it as today. Like I I felt like it was today. Yeah, like you could honestly, you could insert yourself in it, and it doesn't really have that time barrier that some movies uh -huh. have. Like I felt like if you were, if you were just like I don't know, that's kind of weird. But if you were to go back in time and watch it, and like 
2000s or the 90s or something, you could still kind of connect to where it's at. You might not know what that phone was, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I think you yeah. could kind of connect still. Um, there was a lot of, like, emotional strife in the movie. I thought they had a really good job of setting up characters uh, emotionally and more or less playing to the characters instead of just having them be, like, I guess perfect in a sense. Um, like when uh, Mildred, you know, literally firebombs the police station and the guy's in there. <laughs> this movie was so, like, took me by surprise. Like, none of the characters did it, what I expected them to do. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I was just like, holy... F like, literally, when when the sheriff committed suicide, I was like... No, that was what surprising. What the fuck I, just I was just happened? like... It took I, me literally a couple minutes. I was like, what? Because he just didn't seem like the dude that would do that. But then you, like, you, you read the, the thing as it goes on, and you're like, holy shit, like... I, I can understand what you're talking about, you know, like, that'd be rough, especially, like, you know, with a family like that, but then, you know, his whole letter was interesting, it was cool to hear him talk about, like, Dixon and Mildred and how he was like, I know you, you know, it was a really good plan that you did this, you know, she's, like, he's still, like, he's making light of his own death, basically, and uh, what's happening around him. Well, um, he, he... He really was a really good, <clears throat> like, sheriff or, like, a public figure, right? Like, he really mm -hmm. he really did respect Mildred. No, yeah, he did. He didn't... He wasn't like the other ones that were... I mean, like, Dixon kind of, you know, took offense to it, but, you know, he was just like, nah, it's okay, you know? Yeah. Let her do her. She's not doing anything wrong kind of thing. And Dixon was like, no, she's, like, killing you through these, post like, these billboard stuff or whatever. Um... And then, you know, again, another twist, I thought, you know, Dixon did it. No? Well, Dixon's the one that freaking figures out who, it, well, I guess it ends up, again, another twist, he didn't do it. I, I don't understand how that happened. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is it. I'm so this glad, so cool. because I think that would have been way too predictable. I you... know, and I was actually, like, I was so disappointed, but then I thought about it, and I was like, you know what, like, that's probably better that it was like that. Yeah, much better. I thought because that's why I was just like, oh, he did it like immediately, like five minutes in. And I'm like, if I, like, that's not exciting if yeah. it's five minutes in. Yeah. Um. And I thought I thought he also burned down the uh, the billboards. Yeah, I thought it was him too. Like, didn't. yeah, and it wasn't. <laughs> just like this... no, they they set you up to believe these things. They did Martin such a McDowell. good job of doing it. Donna? Like, man, uh, I don't remember. Yeah. Wait, wait how, a minute. How wait are a you minute. guys thinking? Why do you guys think he didn't? Yeah, Dixon did did burn the billboards down. No, he didn't. No, it was the husband, the ex-husband. He admitted yeah, to it. Husband. Yeah, he literally yeah. admitted it. Yeah. He, he, he said I was kind of oh. drunk. He's like, I'm sorry, but I was kind of drunk. Right. Okay. Because she, she. Okay. So she gives him that look as he said that, and I thought he was excusing her, him, like beating her. But he was just like, yeah, I was just kind of drunk while they were, like, together. But that... Oh, he did beat her. <clears throat> no, I, I know. But I, th I thought oh. that was, like, him excusing... Oh. Trying to excuse no, 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 himself. No. But, okay, that makes, like a, yeah. that makes more sense, I guess. No, he literally... I think he says it. I was, got drunk and I, I burnt them down, basically. And she says, like, oh, you did it. And, like, like a shocked look or whatever, you know? Yep. Um, hmm. So that was just like I didn't expect that, and because Dixon did that whole thing where he like went and left the house or whatever yeah. beforehand, mm -hmm. so I was like, oh, it was him. You know, they just set you up for so many of these like holes that you just fall into. <laughs> yeah, no, you're expecting it to go one way and it goes yeah. completely the other way. And that's why I think I like this movie so much. Uh, I give it pretty much, I'd say, honestly, probably a nine, and I did love it. Um, you, at one point, you think Dixon's gonna kill himself. No, like, and then he doesn't. I, yeah, <laughs> and then he doesn't, and it's just like, and then he calls her and's like, <clears throat> and then he figures out who it was, and then he it wasn't who it was, and oh my god, because it, it just <laughs> felt so bad, because like you have this such a flip of emotion on Dixon. I know. At the beginning, you're just like, fuck this dude. <laughs> he's an idiot. He doesn't know what he's doing. Like, you know, you 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 watch him beat the fucking newspaper dude for pretty much no reason. 
I'm actually like I'm kind of like God. Like at the end of the movie, I'm just like, oh, I hope he gets his job back. But I'm like, yeah. oh, he's such a fucker. Like I don't want. Like, but do if you like, like there's two halves of him in this movie, and like once he gets burnt, I think that was kind of his. Yeah, I wake think he up starts call to and Yeah, I think his wake up call was the message Letter. from the yeah chief. Will oh, be. that's true. Yeah, actually, well, I guess that's the same scene though. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, which I was, so. which I was surprised that it had such a profound effect on him, because yeah, he maybe, maybe he just he really, revered he looked, to up to, he looked up to that guy so much that uh, yeah, I guess he's just no like, he he literally like revered him in my opinion like he was he when he was talking to Chief Willoughby like he didn't care what else happened his his whole reason for living quote unquote was Chief Willoughby because Chief Willoughby got him this job has believed in him when no one else has has given him these chances and everything. So he was like, this is, you well, know. Well, yeah, he was in the academy for, I think, six years, which is a long time. and Because uh, he kept failing or whatever. School. Yeah. And was high school. No, he was held back in high school. But he was in the police was... academy for, like, at least five years. Uh, so, really, like, the chief really did respect him, and he saw what was good in him. And... I think that allowed Dixon to kind of be childish and stupid because he always had the chief uh, behind him. Yeah. And I guess with the chief gone and then reading that letter, it was finally for him, it was... Time, and being fired, I think, as well. Time time to grow up and mm-hmm. kind of just actually try to be a good cop and stuff. Or person, just in general. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I guess I guess I can go next if you were done, Tanner. Uh, yeah, I'm done. I I'm gonna give this movie uh, a nine, and I can't decide between liked and love. I think I probably will watch it like seven hundred times. So maybe maybe I'll love it, but I'll, I'll say a like for now. Boo! Say love. You haven't said love on anyone yet. I know. <laughs> um. So, to me, this movie really reminded me of No Country for Old Men. Uh, it's very... I think it's just kind of shot in the same kind of style, where it's not... A lot of scenes really aren't over, overly done. It's kind of more set in just real life. Um, yeah. I don't know what else I had to say about that. <laughs> I, I sorry, I had a mind fart there. Um, but yeah, No Country for Old Man is a movie I really liked because it uh, it was very different from other movies, from like that typical Hollywood, you know, cut and paste kind of storyboard. And this movie also did that. Uh, like Tanner already said, it, you think things are going to happen and then those things don't happen and other things happen. I really like that. It, it just seemed like it was completely unique. Because um, you think it's going to be about solving this murder, uh, this rape murder, but it's not. It doesn't get solved, at least. Uh, it Not, not, that, re- yeah, not um, that we know of, yeah. They, they go, so, they go see it's more about the people and their experience in this, I don't know, week or month or whatever, than it is about the story of the billboards and trying to solve this murder, which is always interesting. Uh, well, was interesting. Um, everyone felt really real. Uh, the way they talked, the way they, the things that they were, hmm. how do I say this? Like the, the chemistry between the ex-husband and Mildred was very real, I felt. Oh yeah. Um. And like the ex-husband dating a, like. 21 year old and being 50. <laughs> so, so she, okay, so that character, the 20 year old was kind of too dumb hot yeah she was hot but she was, <laughs> she was uh she was too dumb to, 
<laughs> she was too dumb to be a real person. I felt she was like the lowest point of the movie. Where everyone felt really real. She was just, what is this, a sitcom? Comedic. I think more she was trying to be, not, like, in, in a sense, innocent, but, like, you know, not caught up in it. I think it was just supposed to be, like, don't look at this character because it's not her fault or not whatever, you know? Yeah. She's a good person, basically, is what I was trying to say, I think. And, and honestly, I feel like that character, you guys might have thought she was dumb and they had, she had, like, dumb dialogue, but I feel like the, the actress who did it did it so well that I was convinced that she was secretly smart. <laughs> Like yeah. she didn't, she didn't come off dumb to me, really. Really? No, like I said, I think she did, to me as well. Actually, I like go ahead. Sorry, I don't mean to. Cut yeah, you. no, that was my main point. Was that um, she, I, maybe that was the fault on her? But I was that was one thing I had a, a trouble with was because whenever she would talk and she would th say things, you know, her facial expressions. She was. I felt like she even had a little bit trouble of maybe she was trying to look too dumb and maybe I don't know. Just kind of backfired for me. She didn't seem hmm. that dumb to me. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was. It could have gone either of one two ways. I think part of it was trying to be like she's a good person, innocent kind of thing, and like she's just living her life. Or they were trying to go for the aspect of she's just a dumb, like you know, like it sound rude or whatever, but a dumb like twenty year old dating older people kind of thing. Like I don't know which way they were trying to go with it, because in my opinion, it seemed more that she was just innocent, living life kind of thing. Yeah. But I think they could have and. Maybe we're trying to go for the more of the dumb, like, yeah, I don't know how to put it. Yes, but no, I, that I, kinda... think, I think they were going for dumb 19 year old dating. They managed to get just a normal ass 19 year old living her life, like you said. So that, that's that was my yeah. opinion on it. Well, yeah. Uh, she's, yeah, she's like this 19 year old with this probably a very basic life, and sure, she's dating this 50 year old, but she's kind of just sucked into this very dramatic uh circle yeah, of people that's crazy like could you imagine all of that yeah so the other thing uh woody harrelson is such a good fucking actor like every movie i see that guy in he's like fantastic and i don't think a lot of people really talk about him but yeah he was amazing in this movie and uh, the last thing I want to talk about was uh, Dixon was my favorite character. Of course he was. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, oh, Mike likes this guy. Uh, <laughs> well, he, the redemption. Yeah, no, at first he's so fucking hateable and he's such an idiot. But then, like, like we just previously talked about... Um, him getting that letter and like the the moment that was really really awesome i felt was he notices like the fucking buildings on fire and he grabs the the case file because it's important to him and just him telling himself like be calm be calm be calm that was just really nice because it's something you wouldn't have expected that character to do at all at that point also also, I know I didn't say it before, but uh, in the car when she's like, I burnt the... When she finally tells him that she's the one that, like, you know, put the arson or whatever, he's like, oh, yeah, I knew that, like, long ago. Yeah. And he was still helping her or whatever. That was really cool. Yeah. He was like, who else would have it been? But, yeah, and uh, he just... Yeah, he totally redeems himself. He grows up, and he wants to be a cop again, and he's really, really trying at it. But then... You know, he gives his badge because the chief is so so impressed with him. And he's like, oh, you did such a good job. And he thought maybe he was going to leverage this to, like, try to get his job back. But he's just like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, I didn't catch the guy. I'm not worthy enough to become a cop again. And he puts his badge down and he goes and he leaves. And it was like, holy shit. Like, you think... At first, all he wanted to do was be a cop again, right? But then, that wasn't what was important to him by trying to solve this case, right? He was trying to, I, I guess, be a better person. He was trying to help Mildred and help the chief, right? Like, I don't know. I just, I really liked his character. No, I think his character had really good development yeah so we we can have uh july speak now oh, there. 
Why? <laughs> I don't know. You're the girl, and <laughs> why? Um, have we talked about Peter Dinklage yet? Because he was no. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was. He was okay. He, in his it. character gave a perspective on the on. He was, called was Mildred up. out. Yeah, is Mildred, what happened? Yeah. yeah. He I didn't called yeah. Support the ladder. <laughs> Oh God, I love that part honestly because yeah. to be to be honest with you, like you know, like because you feel for Mildred, but at the same time, like she's such a bitch, and yeah, like, yeah. You know, she like, is. She is an unlikable bitch. She is a very unlikable main character. Um, but she did it so well. Like Frances McDormand did amazing as she always does. But um, but yeah, like I I love I love Peter Dinklage's part just for that moment because I feel like. I feel like she realized something at the very least. Uh, this movie's weird. Um, there, like with a it has like an like a, I read it an anti karma idea represented in the movie. So, because first you got Mildred, she uses the billboards to blame Willoughby uh, for not finding the killer of her daughter. In return, he pays for an extra month's rent. Mm -hmm. uh, two. Dixon throws Welby, you know, like the little, the, the guy out the window, at the second floor window. But when he meets Welby in the hospital and tries to apologize, Welby's mad at him, but eventually gives him a glass of juice. And then Mildred sets the police station on fire with Dixon inside. Dixon decides to save Mildred's daughter's case file from the fire before leaving and eventually gets burned by the fire set by Mildred. Um, and it's just like, I don't know, it's just really funny. Like, and like, it's just, it's just constantly like you do something, you do something wrong, something bad happens. And then it's like anti-karma. It's really weird. The, like you get. Sorry. I was just going to say like, uh, I don't know who's seen old country for old, no country for old men, but like, it's very similar in the sense of that where like one thing leads to another thing and it's like a weird kind of chain of events just like this movie like they really reminded me of each other yeah well because and like the the reason why i brought up the peter dinklage's part because it's one of those moments too where we learn that charlie or you know her ex-husband uh was actually one who set the billboards on fire when he was drunk and later in the scene when her date is ruined by herself um she takes her leftover bottle of wine goes to charlie's table and tells him to take care of his new girlfriend and leaves him with the wine bottle like charlie just did something bad but he just got a wine for free you know what i mean like and yeah. he got good advice like it's just this weird like you know like uh mildred set the police station on fire but then he sh but Dixon's over here going to be working on the case. You know, he saved, like, the one thing he saved was her case file. You know what I mean? Like, so she just got this, like, even though she super doesn't deserve it. Like, anti-karma. It's super weird. Um, it's a really good movie. It's like, a, like I said, um, it's really, really unexpected. And everything that's happening in it is really unexpected. Um, I think, you know, like the Mar Martin McDonough. I don't know how you say his name. Uh, I've seen the other only other movie that I've seen of his is Seven Psychopaths, and now that I know that he wrote that and this, it kind of makes more sense to me. Um, just because like Seven Psychopaths is kind of the same way. Like I don't have any. Have you any of you watched that movie? No, I have not. Yeah, oh, no. so it's it's. I mean, we. I think me, Garrett, and Gabe watched it together. Um, that movie, like same thing. Like everything happens the way I do not. Ex it's the, it does not follow the typical movie trend. Um, I you know I'm I'm gonna give him credit for it too because Seven Psychopaths isn't exactly like the best movie out there, but like you, you can see some obvious development. He wrote that movie in 2012. It's 2018. Martin, like he's gotten better, is is what I'm trying to say. Like there's yeah. like there's obvious like improvement here, and and Seven Psychopaths is not a bad movie. Um, but yeah, I think it's a I think it's a really really great movie. I think the acting was phenomenal. I think every character had a purpose, uh, which is like I even like the like uh, I think it um, I think I see on the list his name is Jerome, like the guy that was putting up uh, the billboards, and he <laughs> even when he like it's just like small stuff. Like every single character in this movie was pretty pretty cool, pretty relevant. Um, I thought it said a lot about today's political climate. And it was a really good movie. So I don't think I'm ever going to watch it again, though. I'll be honest with you. Like, I think this is a one and done for me. Because um, even though it was a really good movie, I thought, I don't think, like, it still made me feel pretty bad about life. Um, and, uh, 
Like I said, look, and I att- when I tend to watch movies over again, it's because I want to like feel those emotions again, and I don't know if I want to do that again. <laughs> I, I don't <laughs> feel bad about life. Yeah, it's just not. A, it's a sad dude. It's a sad movie. It like her. I think, I think it also could be a good movie if you take it the way you said. The negative karma is more so not negative karma or whatever anti karma. Uh, and more so, it's the good and goodness in people. Yeah, I guess so. I it's I. A- I could rewatch this again and again because it's not something you have to totally pay attention to. Uh, it's not very visually, uh, like it is shot well and stuff, but it is just talking. So if you're just There's bored not, uh, and yeah. playing a video game, you could just have it on in the background. Pretty. There's easily. also not a lot of like different scenes. Like the, a lot of the scenes are just kind of like reused backgrounds, almost not like in the same sense, but like oh she's in the shop. Oh she's at the billboards. Oh she's at home. Oh we're at mm-hmm. the police station. Oh. Yeah, it's a small you town. Know. It's oh, a small town. Uh, it's not, no, but it's yeah. Not, yeah, it's not what I'm really talking. I'm, I'm more like it made me feel no, bad know, because she she has a sad life. She has a really terrible relationship with her kids. She obviously had a terrible relationship with her daughter before she passed away. Her husband was abusive towards her. Her, you know, like her daughter was raped and killed while being raped. Um, and I don't know, like like no one really cares a lot about like no one really respects her but at the same time she doesn't give anyone respect and the police officer will be you know like uh, you know kind of think he's a shitter at first but he ends up being a really good man and kills himself i don't know like this movie made me feel kind of bad like that's all i'm gonna say like and then you, you, i mean i even felt bad for peter dinklage his, his little he, he gets made fun of by his ex by the ex-husband being like oh yeah you know like oh she's a big woman to you and i, I don't know i'm just like oh poor peter dinklage and i'm just like oh like everyone in this movie like i felt bad about dixon's life like dixon's life is fucking sad like that 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 town makes me sad like the entire thing makes me sad there's very few people that i'm like oh yeah your life's going really great other than willoughby's other than the fact that he had terminal cancer and then killed himself you know what (laughs) i mean like literally the one person in in the character that i thought like life was going all right for was that person and yeah it 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 also doesn't really give you any other characters but that like yeah you get jerome but jerome like if you look at the like jerome's i assume that's his name i don't really know either but you look at like jerome he meets uh the owner of the shop and then later on, you see him at the bar with her, and like they're have, like looks like they're having a date. Yeah. So I, I think like his story is. Oh yeah, that that's nice. Good, but but that's not. Just, that's like a second. That's like a third. Yeah, I know. Thing. They're I'm just, just like saying, tying like, in another story. All I'm, I know what you mean. I'm just saying like, in the in the scheme of things, they don't really give you a lot of other characters. Yeah, that's they exactly why the, it's too the focus sad. Of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> no, I agree. It's it. It can be a sad movie for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's still, there's a lot of, like, really badass parts, and, like, the like, it's, overall, the movie's amazing. It's just, like, oh, God, like, I'm just, like, man, life is sad. <laughs> yeah. No justice. Anyway, I'd probably give it, um, let's see here. I'd probably give it, like, an 8 and a liked. Yep. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to clarify, the... So the guy that they went to go kill at the end of the movie, he like, they're saying that like he he was in the army and he raped. He probably raped someone, someone in Afghanistan. Or yeah. Okay. I was pretty sure that's what they were talking about. Or, or the commanding officer is covering up for covering him. up for him, which is what I thought. Oh, oh, you guys are point. going could, down. Definitely, that looking definitely glass. see that happening. I was gonna say, I was gonna ask you, Jeff, actually, if uh, your opinion. For on sure. That. Well, I mean, my, I guess I'm a little biased since my very first unit was uh, busted for corruption. So, oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. Well, but did they say something about him being discharged, though? Mm, I don't think I don't so. Think so. Oh, okay, I, I, don't, I couldn't remember if they did or not. Well, we we can hear from Gabe next. Okay, uh, I'll start off with my score. I'll probably give it a 7 out of 10 in, in liked. Um, I generally liked uh, most of the points everybody's talked about. Um, I guess because we've only talked about the great things, I'll kind of notice, or I'll pull, throw some things out there that I noticed that, uh, I guess, bugged me in a sense. Um, one, I feel like the worst actor, and maybe even character in the whole movie, was the stupid, what was he, like the sergeant? The, the short, bald cop oh, yeah, the desk sergeant that i just thought he was a bad actor first of all and then like his he just had it i mean he was just that third cop that was just there i guess <laughs> i 
so he kind of annoyed me, but obviously he didn't affect me much. I just thought I'd point that out because I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like if if this movie was from the teenage boys' perspective, it'd be a very sad movie. Because oh. that boy's just trying to live his life, and he's got a fucking <laughs> bitch of a mom that's probably getting him bullied at school because yeah, she's crazy. Yeah. I felt really bad for that kid. I thought yeah. it, was, it was so crazy. Like, he's so excited to see his dad, and then, like, a second later, he's got a fucking knife to his throat. That's what I'm saying. This movie's fucking sad. <laughs> just like, and, thought, oh. and bringing that up, I thought, yeah, everything was so volatile in that family that I was surprised that nobody's been killed, like, just because of their fighting. Like, I yeah. just have always been, like, seriously hurt because of their fighting. Because it seemed like things escalate really quick. And it's funny because he puts a knife to his neck, and then, like, five seconds later, he's helping his dad put the table back up. Yeah. Like, and it was no big deal. I, I guess it's to <laughs> say something about, like, abusive families. I guess really anywhere that like, it happens that it happens so often that it just becomes normal. And yeah. Like, okay. Well, we got our yeah, episode. Yeah, you have to be functional it. somehow, right? Like. Yeah, we, yeah. we got our episode out. Let's just get back to normal, exactly. which is really sad as well because I'd hate to fucking have to deal with that, live like that, anything like that. Um, generally, I liked the movie because there was not. I mean, and you guys have kind of touched on this to a, to a degree. There, there's not one person that's definitely like the protagonist in the movie. Um, if there was anybody that was like that, it was probably um, the sheriff or the, the police chief. I don't remember what exactly he was, but um, yeah, it was the police chief. Police chief. Uh, so he was probably the closest one that was kind of just like a overall general helpful guy. He still had his own flaws, like they they talked about early in the movie. Um, not very really many, but um, I I liked the fact that everybody had to let development and everybody was a mixed bag. Um, for sure, because, you know, starting off, you want to be uh, Mildred's biggest fan, but then she starts to do some crazy shit, like, I was, her, I was her biggest fan until she assaulted the dentist and fucked his thumb up, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm done. Kind of oh my god, I totally forgot about that scene until yeah. you brought it up. Like, I lo- like that scene deleted from my mind for some reason. <laughs> that was hard. I, I would have let that dentist like fuck her. my mouth up and then <laughs> sue him for malpractice. You kidding me? <laughs> Jeff, do you honestly think anything happens in that town? Like, pressed charges? Yeah, the right. fucking policeman threw the red out the window, and he's just walking the street. I know. That, when I saw that, I, <clears throat> I had no hope in this fucking town. <laughs> um, Did it, it remind you of your hometown, babe? I'm just kidding. No, we have, we have laws, even though I did <laughs> most of the police. So. Um, let's see. Uh... Oh, and the last point, the last major point that I wrote down that I'll talk about is, and this is probably only a big deal early in the movie for me, because I kind of toned it down later on, is I thought, and I know it's trying to be realistic, but I still thought that the cussing was way too excessive and didn't feel natural. Like, they were cussing so much early in the movie, and I just thought it was excessive. I didn't think that was realistic that they would be doing it that much. Um eh. There was I don't know. there I was, don't was very natural. There was uh, a few lines in the movie where I, I agree with you. I can't remember it, but I just remember being yeah. like that came off a little forced. But I think yeah. overall it was pretty 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 good. I'll yeah, never I, forget I, when uh, I was John. Were you with me at this time? It was it was we were in the car with your dad. And one of his friends came over with the gas station getting getting gasoline. And I, I think about 80% of the words he said was fuck. <laughs> he said like four sentences. <laughs> and how I do you remember was that? So awestruck. But, um, so, yeah. yeah, I guess, I guess you know, it's, it's, it, some people can come natural and you like, you hear them talking, like, man, that guy's just a big cusser. But I just felt like they didn't say. Like, you know, whenever you say fuck a lot, you can say it quickly, and it it, it sounds like other people hear it come out of your mouth. You're like, okay, that person knows how to say fuck. <laughs> but some of these words that the like, customers are doing, it just didn't, it, felt, it, felt, it sounded forced, and it didn't sound natural from their mouth, for, for me, personally. And that was only early in the beginning of the movie, um, and it kind of toned down later on. And um, But that was just a small point, too, that I'd like to talk about. And other than that, uh, I think that's it. I'll, I'll keep it short for myself. Okay. Uh, Garrett? 
Um, I don't know what else there is really to say. I think we've covered most of it. Um, although I'm gonna I'm gonna steal Johnny's thunder and talk about the lighting. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> okay. At the very beginning of the movie, it shows the billboard and it's all it's kind of gray and foggy, and they're all kind of fucked up and everything. But at the end of the movie. You know, it shows them with their their nice, pristine red background and black font. And it's just, it's a lot brighter, I felt. And it just, I, I feel like it shows the progression uh, all the characters made from these, like, fucked up billboards to these, you know, nice, new, clean billboards. Um, and also, one of my favorite scenes, actually just because of the lighting and just the aesthetics is the scene whenever Dixon is talking to the new police chief. Um, I don't know his name. Who's the new police chief? Anyway, um, and he's telling him that it's not the right guy or that, yeah, it wasn't, they, he didn't get the, the DNA didn't match or whatever. And it's just like this dark, like everything's black. It looks like ash is sitting on everything because obviously it was just a fire and everything's just black but there's just tiny little like spotlight just from the top. And it's just a super depressing moment because uh, Dixon is just, he's just so sad that he didn't catch the guy that he didn't do. He didn't finish what Willoughby wanted him kind of to finish. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I have I don't have much else to say. Everything else was covered pretty well by everyone else. Um, I think I'd give it a, an eight out of ten. Um, like, it was a really good movie. I enjoyed it all. Solid movie choice, Tanner. Apparently. Yeah, it was really good. Okay, uh, Jeff Arino. Start with my score. I will give this an eight out of ten, and liked i would say um there are two parts my favorite two parts of the movie uh the first one was do you want to fuck with the police and then brother goes <laughs> i guess <laughs> that, oh, you that was great <laughs> and then uh the second part this i thought this was a, a defining moment in the movie um the moment where what what is what is the uh, the the terrible the shitty cop's name? Danny Dixon. DeVito. Dixon. Dixon. Danny DeVito. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you ever take Danny DeVito's name in vain? Just anyway, anyway, anyway. No, you should um, totally. You, it's the moment the, the moment he decides to be a better person. The moment he decides to change. Uh, when he was looking at the flames, and you know he's telling himself, "Calm, calm." I thought that was kind of a metaphor for uh, like a rebirth like he went he literally went through the fire and flames as a new person like he like a fucking <laughs> phoenix like he's literally on fire and he Johnny. was reborn as a new person wait no what did you say John? <laughs> you just said like the name of a song and it just made me think about the I don't know. Never mind. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, guitar, 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 guitar riff. Fucking yeah. Guitar yeah. Hero. <laughs> Does anyone remember Guitar Hero through the Fire and Flames? Yeah. 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 Dragon Force. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great song. <clears throat> so, yeah. Jeff, Jeff, that song was playing in his head. Jeff, that was and also then, my <laughs> favorite moment, Jeff. Because he, he was literally, he was reborn as a new person. Yeah. The, after that moment. Yeah. And it was very apparent. So, I really liked that part. Um,. Yeah, everything else is pretty. I thought it was a really good movie. Um, I I did enjoy how it felt unorthodox. I really enjoyed the part with uh, I can't remember the I can't remember names at all. The midget guy, he how he told off uh, Mildred. I thought that was a fantastic character building point for Mildred because to, up until that point, I was like, I can forgive most of the things she's done. But then once I realized, I was like, wow, yeah, she's being a real bitch. To this yeah. guy who's been yeah, nothing but a great person to her, yeah. and it was just like I really felt, I really felt for him, and I was just like, wow, yeah, because no one really and, stood up to her that she felt didn't like her. Like she, she, all, everyone that was mad at her basically already was mad at her for other reasons. Yeah, and then Peter Dinklage comes along. You know, he wants to uh, 
date her actually and you know and then he finally tells her off and she realizes wait maybe i'm just an asshole yeah and she was i like how I didn't... but does she change yeah, that's, I don't that's think so. um, I don't think she did. I think, I, also, I think she does because when she's driving up with Dixon, the final scene, yeah, yeah, final scene, she's just like, I, I don't know if this is really worth it anymore. Yeah, I didn't, but you know for sure they're gonna fuck that guy up. <laughs> I don't know. They might. I don't know. I don't know how well, they I really do leave it up for what you think, right? They're like, I guess we'll find out if we're gonna go through with this, and then it ends, and it's I either. It kinda... I really. I really, I really hate the idea that solely off of the fucking bar. Not only, not only was Dixon really drunk, obviously he's very drunk, but he was, you know, partially listening into a bar conversation. That is, I, I, I do not see that as a reason to potentially kill someone. I'm sorry, but like people fabricate stories all the time, and if you're drunk and that's what you're going off of, and then she just believes him. Well, and this is how she evolved, right? Because she's, maybe she's working it out in her head and she's like, I don't know really if what he is saying is true or even relevant to what I want. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't think that they're going to do anything with the guy. Because uh, I think they, they're going to realize that, like... They're both still terrible really people. <laughs> <laughs> like for real. Like, this is, just, this is them turning from terrible, and just now this, they're, they're like at rock bottom for terrible, and they're only going up now. <laughs> now, now they're, they're like about to have their <laughs> up, their upward moment. That's it. Now they're vigilantes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, mean, I, Dixon, well, I don't Dixon know if they're actually. Was, I don't think they're going to go through with it. But yeah. When when Nixon was going over to the marketing, like the newspaper area, to kick the Reds' ass, like whenever he was walking up the stairs, you saw that he drew his gun. But then, yeah, and at then the last second, away. he puts it away because yeah. he didn't, you know, I feel like that's at the stage of where, like, they're both at right now with the guy. Like, they're they're realizing that's probably not the best situation, but they're still going to hurt him. Yeah. yeah uh, I don't think, I didn't, I didn't think he put it away. I thought he just pistol whipped it. Yeah. No, he puts he it away. He girl, didn't he? Because he, he holds, yeah, remember, he's, he's he, holding his hand. Yeah. He gets, the baton, he gets the baton out. I think that he hits too. him with the baton at first. The girl, he just, like, open palm strikes her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, Johnny, that's a good point. Like, he has the gun out, and you think he's going to fucking shoot him, and then he puts it away. He, like, has some kind of restraint. Mm -hmm. uh, also, I, I remember you guys talking about the points of, of the ending and enjoying how... It wasn't just, you know, clean solved case where you there they show a guy and you're like, Oh, that's the guy that did it, but then it wasn't. I, I, I appreciate that, but the ending left me left me wanting. Seriously. Yeah. Well no, and that's and that's what makes it a good movie. I did not enjoy is that it. you're I think that's I think that's you subjective uh, to opinion. I, I think a good movie is a movie where you want more. You don't want it to end. Mm. Like when I first saw the Dark Knight in theater, I was like I don't want this movie to ever end. I'm enjoying this so well, I could watch this forever. And then it ends, and you're like, oh, that sucks. Same with this movie. Like, I didn't want it to end the entire time I, I was watching it. I think that's different, though. Sounds like because you just want to watch it. Because in The series. Dark Knight, there's closure. <laughs> yeah, the I, Knight, there's closure I enjoy to the closure. closure. Just, there's no closure. Nah. I think I it's always... just... I, I personally, I like closure. I, just... I, don't, I don't think closure for this movie would have portrayed what they were going for with telling this story or even what they were trying to do with this movie like I mean, they didn't they didn't they didn't want to have a hollywood finish where they find the rapist and oh well it's her, just like her, her soul's at peace and you see her ghost going off into like heaven and shit <laughs> like no it, it really it was just like real life it was I think sometimes could, i think they could have utilized that sometimes to make, to make it like a shitty. final vindictive decision to where she had to choose whether or not she was gonna like personally kill her daughter's killer or you know leave up to the law I sometimes along, sometimes in, in, in the choice they made was fine sometimes in but life don't like it Sometimes in life, <laughs> shitty things happen, and there's no explanation. There's no ending. It's just it just I happens, like, and it's done. I like how both you guys didn't talk over each other. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I'll say, what I'll say with that, with it having 
I was surprised when the fucking movie ended. Like, I was just like, what? Like, it's over? Yeah. Um, so, and, like, and that's what I'll say. Like, that's the only reason I gave it a high, because usually that really bugs the shit out of me. And honestly, it still bugs the shit out of me in this movie. Like, I, I, I am not the kind of person that very easily, like, I don't know, like, I, I, I need closure. So, it, me developing <laughs> my own closure in my mind is really bothersome. Like, I, just, like... Uh, I, I think it was a perfect way to end the movie. I I, I would agree with Michael perfect. to a degree because I think that they just closed the movie off a little too short. It could still be open-ended, but they closed it on them just starting a road trip that was going to take four hours or something. If they, like, stopped the movie... Maybe have them pull they, up to his house. Yeah pull up, yeah, pull up to the house, and then they and say, that's like, okay, we're here. Like, and they look at each other, through? and it ends, or something like that. Yeah. 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 What do you want to do, make and a decision. Ends. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> Um, either way, I, either way, it's like the it it goes with the theme of the movie that I was saying earlier. Everything is not what I expected it. So expected it, Jesus expected. expected it. Uh, <laughs> Excelsior. Uh, Excelsior. We have an announcement. To make. Yeah, do you have an announcement to make? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, 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 I mean, like nothing was as expected. Everything that I like assumed people would do. <laughs> I can't say the word well anymore. Um, everything that I would expect a character to do based on like normal movies that they didn't do. So why would I expect them to end the movie in, in the same way they do for normal movies? So that's the reason why I still think it's a good movie because it, it, it follows through a lot with everything else. All right, yeah, I mean, but, this movie is a... Think about this. Sorry, Tanner. Hold on. No, you're good. The beginning of the movie, it opens up seven months after her daughter got, you know, raped, killed, whatever. And then at the end, it ends abruptly without them leading to a conclusion. There was no opening. There is no end to the movie. Yeah. It just shows... It portrays that life of her struggling, and that's all it wanted to capture it's, for you. It's just a... Uh, it's just <clears throat> one part in this woman's life... And there's no ending. There's no beginning. Right? Exactly, Johnny. It's just, it's just life. Okay, I, I can the beginning of life, Michael. I'm sorry I to can tell you. I can appreciate does. that. Mm, not me. I can appreciate that, and I can see that. How I, I could, I can understand how you guys would say that's a, a a good point to the movie, and I agree it is. But I personally don't like that point. Well, your yeah. personal. <laughs> Feelings mean nothing to us. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, you, once you get that through your head. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But overall, the I, I, movie was great. I gave it an 8 out of 10. Um, I'm just saying that, personally, I didn't... I, I, I know what you mean, it. and obviously, like I think we're on different sides of it. But I think mm -hmm. a ending or closure would cheapen a movie that is about real life. Yeah. I, I think that's just something... That's a good point. That's too much movie-like. This is supposed to be a snapshot into someone living, in my opinion. This is supposed to be like, this is life. And you're supposed to leave it and think like, wow, I wonder what happened with that person's life. Not like, oh, they did that. Yeah. You know, it's just, I think it's supposed to be like, again, like a snapshot of someone's life. I don't think it, it needed to have that closure. And even though if you did one, and I understand. It's just, in my opinion, if they had done that, I think that'd be... I don't know, a little bit too movie-like in a movie that's supposed to be kind of just life. Yeah. It's a naturalism. So, yeah. so two things before Johnny goes. Um, I know what my next movie is going to be, and now my next movie is going to be. <laughs> okay, well, don't tell us, because we hey, don't want to know. Okay, so why did you say that? Like, well, you I, I think... <laughs> no, no, it's just... You don't want to know. Four of these same movies don't want to say my movies. No, no, I'm just saying... <laughs> from, like, I have an from, announcement. From okay. what... I know my movies. From what I was talking about before in the earlier the movie, or this review... No for old men. There yeah. you go. There <laughs> you go. Johnny <laughs> figured it out. Um, And then, so yeah, the second thing was, I like... And I meant to say this before, but whatever. Uh, so the beginning of the movie, and she's putting up these billboards. You really think that this cop, this person that those bi these billboards are talking about, is going to be a fucking asshole? And then he turns out to be like the nicest, most likable guy. And I just really like how they did that. Like he wasn't. Yeah, he nothing wasn't. Nothing is as expected. He's not. Yeah, he's not. A, he's not a Hollywood villain. He's not. He's not even a villain at all. He's just like a nice guy, and he's Normal like, listen, guy. I tried to do my job. You know, maybe down 
and down the down the line in a few years, you know, somebody overhears something in a bar, and then you get, you know, then you get your arrest because, and then you think that's what's going to happen with Dixon, Actually, I, and then it's not. I just realized that that, that was foreshadowing. Yeah. I didn't think about that. And that, and no, so she really gets her her hopes up because that's what the chief said to her, right? Yeah, maybe one down the line, like you know, someone will say something in a bar or whatever, and then exactly what happens, ha- like yeah, that was actually kind of crazy. I didn't even think about that. That's very subtle. Yeah, I mean, like I know it's like a literal, it like it's not. What? I I I thought it was obvious. No, I said I know it's very literal, but I wasn't like that's not something I picked up and was like keeping ahead. I wasn't yeah. like, oh, he said that. Better watch out for a bar scene. Like, I just was like, oh yeah, I mean, right. That's what happens. Like people will hear something. People talk. Yeah. Anyways. Jonathan. All right. Wow. Us. So, uh, so <laughs> when the fir- when the billboards first came up, as a designer, I wanted to critique these billboards. <laughs> but then you saw what they were saying, and you were like, "Oh, I can't touch that." The controversial <laughs> political. I mean, e- everything has a meaning behind it. Even these billboards are so impactful to the storyline and just like drawing the attention to these police officers to actually do something. And so I was curious <laughs> to know why they chose that font that they did. And do you guys <laughs> want to know what the name of the font is? Please yeah, tell us. Yeah, yes. please. Tell us. This this word I think is what defines this movie. If I were to give it one word to define this movie, it would be impactful. The font is called impact. And huh. I th- I think it, that so like ties it up completely because this movie was one hell of a ride of just impact after impact. That and, like has to be some super in depth meta thing that like the director <laughs> fucking did. because Mildred does not know anything about fucking fonts. She definitely did not pick that font. But Johnny, like that's like the director put that in there for like people like you to figure out. Yeah, he put it in <laughs> well, there for you, Johnny. Is impact, so, is, is, is impact fairly? I want. I don't want to say common, but it's is common. It fairly well known. Yeah, I thought, I thought it's it was very common. common. Okay. It's old fashioned. It's definitely something that you would see on billboards, um, especially. Well, even that blood red color that they chose too. Like the there was. There was definitely thought that went into it. Like, if she were, if she was the one who like chose the colors at least for it, she un- she knows what she's doing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, the just the whole idea of having such an impactful movie is just, I think it's so clever because with with Mildred, she's just such a stone cold kind of like badass woman that just won't let anyone else into her life now, and there's so many like the drama around her with like the people that she loves and the just people in her town that knows her you know the 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 constant battle that she's dealing with every day on top of her daughter just dying seven months ago is just really straining to her um but i think another thing to say about this movie is that it's just pretty much uh, I'd say it's like a visual slash audio representation of like a broken heart of like what that would be just because so much has happened in like this. How long do you think this movie like took place? I would say like, I don't know, a month. Probably about two months, right? Two like, months, cause yeah. the... It was two months yeah. because she paid the first month's rent yeah. and then right. paid the second month. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like on top of her, her, daughter dying like all of this happening within two months is just so heartbreaking to to anyone in this town it seems and i th- i think it's just like what the director wanted was definitely something that made you made it impactful on your life and to kind of like make you reflect on your own um blessings i guess too so it's yeah. kind of all I have on it. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll rate it 8 out of 10 liked. Um, Beautiful. You guys talked about a lot of other stuff that I was going to mention. But uh, yeah. Really quickly before Jeff tells us his pick, uh, how come none of us brought up like the best scene in the movie where the she comes into the home and the priest is there? 
Oh yeah. Fuck! Oh, I forgot about yeah. that scene that in the movie. That was that amazing. That is so good. She tells him off so well. So well. I love her. I love her when she's just like, "Finish your fucking tea and get the fuck out of my house." <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. She's just basically calling him like a pedophile or just a piece of shit. Like. God, I fucking want to see that quote again. That that yes. has to be that whole scene like, is you're, amazing. You're you're right. I can't believe I forgot about it. Like, I the, thought like, Garrett like, was gonna bring it up for sure, man. Well, be, like, dude, like this movie. That's like one of the like one of the wonderful and like awful things about this movie is that like there is so many things that happen um, that take you unexpected. Like, I think like your mind just like oh like that was that would that one was not as shocking or as bad or. Um, as rememberable as the other parts of the movie yeah. you know what i mean but that it was amazing yeah it's very it's a very uh side note scene but like it's hilarious i laughed yeah so about hard the, the, about those crips <laughs> and those bloods yeah, yeah. 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 Like, well, thanks for coming anyway yeah yeah, yeah. he's so <laughs> just like he's like, like I, I fucking told you so he knew that was gonna happen yeah so anyways uh God, I just want to. I'm sorry. I'm like reading it now. It's so good. Yeah, Je- <laughs> Jeff, what's uh, what are we gonna watch next week, my friend? All right, so I have it down to three categories. <laughs> Wait, that's <laughs> what? Uh, okay, categories. please, please let's make this quick. I really need to go to the bathroom. <laughs> three categories. Okay, there's, what? there's five yeah, movies. What do you mean category? Okay, five movies. Jesus. Five just calm down, you guys. Yeah, yeah guys. Well, let's hear him out. Let's hit the Jesus. Guy out. Let's give him a chance, everyone. <laughs> all right. So okay. first of all, who has watched or heard of The Untouchables? It's a French movie. I have. Is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, it's. it's Wait. A... <laughs> really? I've, I've heard of it. I've never seen it. I'm thinking of the one about a uh, paraplegic white guy and the black no, no. guy. You're I'm talking about. The... I'm thinking about the one about. Um... The mob, so no. Yeah, from okay. 1987. So no one has seen The Untouchables. From 1987. No, 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 from 2011. 2011. Oh. The Untouchables. The Untouchables. In- oh, The Untouchables. Oh, in- 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 untouchables. I was like, <laughs> I'm sure. I am. Untouchables. I was just like, man, I don't see a pair of <laughs> 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 like a crime movie. It's like this. Oh, yeah. It's about, uh, what's his face? Okay, so have you guys seen this movie yeah. or not? No. 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 Okay, alright, good. So that's a top contender right now. Next movie, uh, Whiplash. Who has seen Whiplash? I have. Drummer. Me and Julie have. Oh, I want to see that. No, I have. No, I have not seen it either. I oh, have God, not seen Garrett? it. No. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Garrett? I, I like it. Has Game Garrett seen it? No. No, he hasn't. Okay, all right. That's another big cup. Um, I'm going to remove I'm gonna from the list because... Ah, oh, that sucks. Uh, my next <laughs> one is, uh, is The Pianist, but I'm going to remove that one from the list because I don't want to watch that. It's, yeah, it's, it's so um, long. And my last, my, yeah, exactly. My last two movies... Um, Hector and the Search for Happiness. Has anyone seen that? No. Nope. What is these movies? <laughs> they're they're really good. It has movies. Simon Pegg um, in it, so I am all about it, honestly. And then the last one, I'm. If one of you guys have seen this, I'm going to be very surprised. Ur ist weiter da. <laughs> Just, I'm going to hold on. What? Er, er, dick. Can you translate that from? I, I, I put it. I put it in uh, in Discord. Just search it up. It's a movie about Hitler sure, time right. traveling to the present. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh look but at his Trust bag. me, it's fucking good. Is it a comedy? It so good. That's a comedy. It's oh, a it's comedy. Look who's back. <laughs> kind of like it's it's really good. Look who's back. But anyway. I think it has really good ratings. Jeff, I... It is really good. All these but... movies are very abstract. Hitler. Uh... Hitler. <laughs> Hitler. <laughs> it, it, it I gotta, is... I gotta so, go with So, uh... look who's back. Just so you know, Urge okay. to Wider Die picking. is he's part picking. of Netflix. So, sorry. It's the only one that's free. <gasps> <laughs> I'm gonna go with The Untouchables. Uh, the Untouchables? The Untouchables? Intouchables. I think it's going to be a movie that all of you will thoroughly enjoy. Um, if, if anyone, I know I've said this. Oh, you should have said that. Now I'm going to not like it. But if <laughs> anyone of you um, doesn't like it, I'll be very surprised. 
It's a very good movie. It's in French, so I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to read subtitles. Okay, so can you go like a little bit what it is and so I don't I guess I could look it up, sorry. Yeah, well it's uh it's a biography, know. comedy and drama, Tanner. Okay. Yeah. I don't really I, say, it's I been think a long time usually have like a little bit of a description. It. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Um like years. But the fact that I could remember it like I, I was trying to think of movies that like impacted me have or something impacted that was memorable. You. Yeah. Hmm. What did I say? Impact, I think. Impact? Anyway. Um yeah. These, these movies were definitely ones that uh, I really enjoyed. It's available to stream on YouTube, Amazon Prime, Google Play, and Voodoo offer the it's a low price of two ninety nine. And iTunes for three ninety nine, but fuck you iTunes. Whoa. Why well, is iTunes three ninety nine? Okay. Well we'll see you next time. Comment, rate, subscribe. Like has to be. Watch Untouchables with us. Yes, watch Untouchables. Uh say bye everyone. Bye, bye everyone. Bye. There we go. Bye.